Roll call. Right. No, I just want to make sure I'm like. <laughs> I just. All right. All good. All right. All right. Chair Harry Meyer. Here. Vice Chair Gary Del Bo. Here. Jim Fulmer. Here. Alderman Joe Moore. Present. Melanie Karma, SP. Excuse. Matt Schuler. Present. And Tom Weber. Present. Ask for a motion to approve the agenda that's sent out to everybody. So to approve. Second. Joe and uh, Gary, those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, right. carried. Approval of the minutes as reported uh, a couple weeks back. Motion? Approve. Gary? Second, second by? Second. Who? Second. Second. Tom. Okay. <laughs> those in favor say aye. Aye. Oh, is that a <laughs> uh, Communications. Consider with possible action on Communication from April 6, 2017 to the Common Council by Alderman Moore to draft a resolution supporting home and community development block grant funds and encourage our Congressional and U.S. Senate representation to continue supporting the flow of these funds to the City of Green Bay. Recommendation is to refer this to staff. I'll take a motion. So move first. Motion by Tom. I'll comment on it. Second by Joe, since you... Yeah, I can comment on it. Sure, go ahead. Um, okay, so we know that with the uh, federal budget, uh, one of the cuts that they're looking at doing is this uh, block grant funding. Um, but there is also a big focus on infrastructure in Washington, right. putting a lot of money into that. So to take the money out of the local communities like this and to reapply it somewhere else where we don't have as much control, I get kind of concerned about that. I like being able to pay valleys, work on playgrounds, improve a city that's over 150 years old. Um, I think we need to have more control over the funds at the local level, and this is the best way to do it. I think uh, Congressman Gallagher um, and Senators uh, Johnson and Baldwin uh, really need to pay close attention because there's a lot of old communities in Wisconsin, and uh, they need to make sure this money keeps coming to us. So what, did your letter raise those points? Uh, well, that's what we're doing right now is we're going to oh. have the city draft resolution, um, put this resolution together, and uh, that'll come before the council for a, a, okay. a vote on whether or not we want to do that and okay. the resolution then. To our, our yeah. local representation. Good. Well, that's a good thing to do. Good. All right, uh, you voted the discussion from Joel. Those in favor say aye. Oh, aye. I need a motion, don't I? Okay. No, we have a motion. Those in favor say aye. 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 Well, let's carry. Just for a clarification, are you comfortable? Do you want that resolution to come back through RDA or do you want it to go straight back to council? Um, I think time is probably of the essence. Right. Um, I, I mean, unless there's some discussion here where anybody's really opposed to that. But okay. I mean, are you okay just if we circulate it via email? I, why don't we just do that, Kevin? Yeah. yeah. Any comments? Sure. If that's appropriate. Sure. Definitely. Yeah, wait, wait. I mean, okay. So, are you saying that you want to circulate it prior to introduction, or to circulate it as the draft that's being pr presented? Because if we're going to ask for comments, that needs to be done in open session. Oh. Okay. Then I would just say we will. If there's any one that's any input, tell us right now. Uh, if not, then we'll just. If you're okay with drafting, I think we got the gist of it. Then we will just send it. To Otherwise, council. appear at city council. City council. After yeah. the council, you yeah. said it does. Yep. Yeah. Well, the resolution is essentially just going to say what we use the yep. funds for and why we think they should keep coming. Right. So. Well, they all go through us, so we should know right. better. Right. right. Mm -hmm. Good. Yeah. All right. So the end of that means we are going to get a copy. Of the You'll get one to do it. We can't make any comments on it. It'll just be a copy of the resolution. That's, that's, going going that's good. <clears throat> Old business, none new business. Consideration of possible action and request by the Green Bay Public Arts Commission to allow the use of parcels 2502 and 8444 for the placement public art via the rotating public arts program. What is that? Cheryl. Okay, so are you aware that Green Bay has a well, public we did arts in the past commission? Time, yeah. Um, so that was just for recently. And one of the first projects they'd like to do is rotating art throughout the city of Green Bay. That's where the, we put a five by five concrete pad down, and then artists we do an RFP for artists, local artists, and then they place the artwork on the pad, and it's for sale. And we change it out. It's always changing and moving, so it's exciting. We want to put them in places where they're very visible to the public. And we've been going through the process of choosing sites. Two of them that were recommended are sites to be redevelopment authority owned. One of them is on the corner of 12th and Mason, which is the old oh. log cabin house site that we own. Mm -hmm. We well, actually I thought we sold that site. No, we did not. We still own that because the, our plan was to take that site and beautify it on the corner because it was such a visible corner. Right. So a piece of artwork would work well, I think, on that mm -hmm. corner. And then the the southeast the, corner. Southeast, southeast corner, corner. Yeah. yes. The Harry Meyer statue. Right. The yeah. Harry Meyer statue. Yeah, big seller. In Grand <laughs> of course. <laughs> and then the other site that the Redevelopment Authority owns is actually on 
the east side of the East River on Mason Street, where there's a little gazebo there, and you're, you're heading on Mason heading east. We own that parcel that's adjacent to the river, and there's a, a large green space that would be a good spot for peace. How big are these pads? Five by five. Five, five by five. Five, five, five. So, so peace would have to be able to fit outdoor on type art, outdoor and, and sculpture. Yep. Nothing that okay. Nope, nothing that can be picked up and correct. All and the it way. would go through the green. The Public Arts Commission would be the age, would be the committee that would vet the artists out, decide which ones would be placed, we'll take them out. Mm -hmm. So we would need to have. Um, it's my understanding from Celestine, and correct me if I'm wrong, Vanessa, on this one, is that with regards to the redevelopment authority properties, we would need a hold harmless agreement um, between the RDA and the artist, and potentially the, art, the yeah. Public Arts Commission as well. So, Is there a maintenance agreement then that would go along with that as well, if it's like, you know, it's graffiti? And yep, it's the, actually the responsibility of the artist okay. to maintain their own art pieces, mm -hmm. so or to take them off, mm -hmm. or hopefully sell them, and then we can rotate them out. Yeah. Yeah. Good what question. I was going to ask for between the uh, our commission and whatever to have every piece of art approved by the city council. No, we, we prefer to have the green, the public arts commission do that. Sure. Someone that someone's interested in a piece of art. Art. Mm -hmm. uh, how, how do they get the the price? Would it go online or? Um, go yep, we probably set that up on a website. Good. We're just going. We're starting the process right now. This is our first year of doing it. So. Good. Any other questions? Thank you, Cheryl. Motion? So moved. Second. Jim, second by Matt. Those in favor say aye. 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 Votes carried. Number three. Consideration of possible action to draft and execute the old harmless and or access agreements with NCR for environmental remediation of the boat slip at 100 West Mason Street. Tax parcel 278. I bet it's Kevin. Yes. All right, so this is dealing uh, with our Greenfield property, 100 <coughs> West Mason Street. Uh, this is part of the Fox River cleanup. As you know, uh, cleanups have been going on the last few years, hopefully going to be finishing up this year, uh, removing the PCBs uh, out of the river. Uh, in terms of uh, affecting adjacent property owners, uh, we were notified that cleanup was going to be happening in this slip. There are some PCB contaminants uh, in the slip. Um, and initially, one of the things uh, we've been discussing is how to remediate those. And there's alternatives um, for either removing all the PCBs or uh, removing partially and <coughs> capping uh, to allow for um, you know, other things to happen, you know, land side around the water. Uh, with that, because uh, this is the parcel that we've been talking about moving ahead with the, the shipyard project, mm -hmm. um, but one of the things we discussed is that if the shipyard does not move ahead, uh, we do not want to constrain ourselves to any potential future use of this site. Uh, and should it want to go back to some type of industrial or port type of use, we may need in the future to be able to dredge that slip out. Uh, so with that, uh, we have been, uh, in terms of negotiations, we have asked that all of the PCBs be removed from the slip. Um, and I believe we're at a spot right now where the cleanup authority and also the Wisconsin DNR are in agreement with that. Um, because the uh, removal of the PCBs, uh, the contaminants are located uh, towards the southern edge of the slip site, so they border parcel 278. Um, when those are taken out, it is highly likely that that wood retaining wall there will fail. Um, so, uh, part of the proposal is to dredge out the PCBs and then replace that wood retaining wall with a riprap wall. Um, so the riprap will look somewhat like uh, it is on, on parts of the eastern shore, uh, you know, like the Riverside Place. Um, that is a method that uh, is agreeable to cleanup authority and also preferred by the DNR uh, in terms of it also helps with the habitat. One of the things that we've also stressed in, in our negotiations is that we will have zero net land loss. So that parcel that's defined there right now, uh, all that buildable area remains after the cleanup. Um, so with that, um, we need to come up and, and draft some access uh, agreements and in use agreements for the cleanup authority to be able to get in and, and, and use that parcel. Um, as you've seen, they're back to work on the river right now. They would like to do this sooner than later. Again, as we've discussed, the shipyard that moves uh, forward. Um, we'd like to have that work done before doing any other work on that site. Um, and so with that, um, we would like just uh, permission to go forth and, and, and draft those documents, so old harmless access agreements uh, that would allow for that cleanup to take place. Just a quick question. Why 
is it assumed that the retaining wall is going to fail because of the dredging? Or is it um, just that it's Sure. It, it's, a, it's an old wall, it's a wood wall, and the way that they're going to go down, if you look on the packet, the PCBs, if you look at a horizontal profile, some of those PCBs are kind of actually underneath the land there, so they have to go in and take some blows out, so you're kind of losing that support beneath it. So once that land starts to slide away, um, given the age, look, it, it, it may stay. <laughs> um, but I, I wouldn't, I'm not an engineer, but I wouldn't put my money on it. I don't know anything else with the <coughs> cleanup. Um, that would be done this year then? Correct. Yeah, I don't know if I missed anything. No, I think that captures it all. Okay. I make a motion to direct staff oh, no, I'm sorry. Sorry. I, I to, to, to uh, draft and execute home harmless and or access agreements with NCR for an environmental remediation of both the 100 West Mason Street tax parcel, 2-78. Uh, I'll, for discussion. Yeah, yeah. And for the discussion. For discussion. I seconded his motion for, for okay. discussion. So I just had a question about sure. the actual riprap. Mm -hmm. I mean, is that a part of the dredging, or is that separately funded and and constructed? So that will be all on on, on their cost. And in terms of again, one of the agreements that we have is that we have a usable parcel right here. Mm -hmm. um, again doesn't matter really that much to us in terms of how you do it we just don't want to have any land loss and in terms of controlling the slip we don't want to be boxed into anything that prevents use of that slip um, th there's some additional funding sources that we could look at potentially for other enhancements when it comes to either habitat or public access uh, there's some grant funding that's available that we've been looking into maybe applying for that um, you know, whether it's trail boardwalk or, or dock access um, but is our understanding that all of that, including your prep, would be covered under this. Cool. And to just expand on that, so one of the things that we have been in discussions with them about is when it comes to that wall, there is, so, so either way, in order to ensure that everything gets done the right way, they have to have a wall put back up somehow. And the first proposal was if it fails, they'll just go ahead and put a new wall in, but DNR wasn't on board for that. Yes. Yeah. Um, what they indicated is that it does not protect habitat, it doesn't create the natural um, flows that are needed to ensure that the water doesn't... Um, it's exactly. And so DNR felt that the more appropriate approach was to go with the riprap. And so when we were looking at it, it didn't create any problems. It wasn't any more expensive than having to replace the wall, and so everybody was in agreement that the riprap was appropriate. Good. And that doesn't limit us for any future, like, right. slips and... So, and that's, you know, another conversation we had in terms of both with the PW and the Parks Department as far as access. I, I think initially we had looked at, you know, retaining a vertical surface there, you know, right. whether it was a sheet pile so that you could just pull right up. Um, that was not preferred by DNR in terms of they're the ones ultimately have to say over it. Um, there was a chance that that wood wall could stay in place and then they would be obligated to put it in, so that would be on our dime. The other, and maybe it's a more practical, uh, application is right now actually we're probably at some of our higher water levels which is great to be able to pull up right um, but should we go through another cycle in 15 20 years um, you know pulling up I think probably remember 15 20 years ago you know you're going up six seven eight feet um, so those combinations of factors made us more comfortable with the riprap versus the sure. straight face wall sure. there. Two, is that? Uh, stone is it yeah, yeah. oh stone yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, generally mix up thing, you know, try local limestone or, or granite. Or yeah, just the, the smell of man-made material. Correct, correct, yeah, it's different. Okay, we've heard a motion and a second. Uh, those in favor say aye. 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 Those carried, good. <coughs> Uh, number four, uh, consider issue and possible action on the request to grant Neighbor Works Green Bay a two-month extension on the Navarino Town Home Project. All right. That would be me. Finn. Thank you. Um, all right, so this past September, um, the RDA approved the development agreement with NeighborWorks Green Bay uh, for the construction of the five uh, single-family townhomes on the former Navarino Park site. Um, what street is that, Kevin? Is that the one in Walmart? Jackson, Jackson, Stewart, Jack Jackson, 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 Stewart Jackson. Jackson. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I got the math right up there. All right. <coughs> and we entered uh, the development agreement in November uh, they were supposed to also uh, commence the project that same month. Um, 
things kind of got a little delayed with it, so we moved that back four months, which was actually in the original agreement um, for a commencement in March. Um, NeighborWorks had actually, they came to us before that commencement date and asked if they could have another two months um, to allow for some other things that came up while they were uh, putting their final uh, plans together. Um, and they, they met with staff, we, you know, we agreed that we like the project and it's, we think it's going to be successful. Um, so we were okay with going ahead with the two-month extension on it. Um, they're actually here today if you wanted to, uh, uh, Tim Dennison from Works, if you wanted to, if you wanted to hear what, what the delays were for. Yeah. But other than that, um, we, you know, we met with them on the design and, you know, we're fully on board with what they've come up with. They've uh, modified um, the first floor plan to kind of allow better flow in the kitchen and just more, uh, just a better flow of the first floor, so. I like, the, I like the uniqueness of the outside there at all the city. Mm -hmm. And that was something we made sure when we, mm -hmm. when we were discussing design with them that so, they were. So when do you expect work to start? Um, May 31st is going to be the new commencement okay. date, so. Right. And they're confident that they can start that, so. Good. Okay, you've heard, do we have a motion? Mm -hmm. Motion to approve the extension. <coughs> Second. Second. Joe, second by Matt. Those yeah. in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed to carry. Number five, consideration of possible action to sell real estate at 702 North Quincy Street, across the 7544 to Green Bay Metro for $125,000. Yes. All right. All right. So this is the former Kimmer's bar slash oh, yeah. my bar. On the corner. Depending, mm -hmm. yeah, when you like that or what you call it. Um, the Redevelopment Authority uh, acquired this uh, about 18 months ago. Um, we were looking at a potential <coughs> development project uh, for the site and involving parcels along uh, North Quincy Street. Um, at the time, uh, we were securing uh, options to purchase on those properties. Um, and at that specific time, Kimmer's was actually for sale. And so, uh, felt it was in the best interest to secure that. Um, basically worked through uh, a few different options in, in terms of um, development projects. Now those moved forward. Uh, so with that, um, we were approached by Transit and asked if we would be willing to sell to them. Um, one of the things that they are looking at is, is some reconfiguration of their parking lot. Um, their, their bus access area uh, to make it much more efficient uh, in terms of loading, unloading, uh, but also uh, in terms of passenger drop-off, pickup. Um, you know, in the last few years, just also with Greyhound uh, moving over there, um, the ability for, for taxis, Uber, to uh, be able to get in and out of that facility more efficiently. Um, and, and so with that, they have asked to acquire it from us. Um, with that, we would ask to receive what we paid for it, um, and, and it's about, given the cost of, we did uh, some testing, and then Ken made to pump out the basement once that filled up, uh, would be $125,000. Um, one amendment that we would ask be added um, is that Transit also asked if we were to sell it that we would also take it down. Um, so they'd be willing to pay the $125,000 plus any costs associated with demolition of the property. Um, those funds would go back into the neighborhood enhancement account. Uh, those funds were used to make the purchase. Um, and I believe the discussion at the time was once the development project moved forward, those funds would go back into neighborhood enhancement. What's your projected cost on teardown? Um, we would probably look at um, you know, doing it when we do another block of things. So initial, we probably looked at maybe ten to fifteen thousand. I just I see a real high profile corner that you know we took off the tax roll by <coughs> acquiring it with the intention of a development coming in that would come back onto the tax roll. And if it goes to transit, I mean, what it's no longer a revenue generating piece of property, and it's going to cost us fifteen thousand dollars to make it. No longer revenue generating. They're going to pay the fifteen. Though. They would pay that back. Yeah, they would pay that on top. So they would cover all the costs to basically get a clean level site. And there's a reason that they want us to tear it down. They're just not in that business. It is easier for them because of all of their federal regulations with federal funding for them just mm -hmm. to make one purchase. 
Um, there, there's a lot more paperwork and bureaucracy that they have to go through in terms of like the bidding process, wages, and everything like that if they're going to do that contract versus if we as a city were just to roll it into our, you know, I don't know how often we do those quarterly, demo yeah, contracts, um, it's just easier for them to buy a piece of real estate. Um, and, and that's why they asked on, on for us or for the RDA to do that. And the railroad property that's owned, that runs through it, that's not going to prohibit them from actually, I mean, they can't do anything with that. So we have been uh, working with the railroad trying to get them to need us that property. You and Kim and Rob Strong and now everybody Ken that's been here for how many years Correct. Been trying to do that. It's abandoned, totally Correct. abandoned. It is totally abandoned. The, the tracks, I think, when I last looked, they were pulled out in the 1980s. Um, and I'm not going to speak, I guess, out of turn, but in terms of, of the use, they have not been actively used by the railroad for that many years. And in terms of the adjacent property owners have been using them for that time since they were taken out. Um, that is one of the things, I guess, legally we'd have to discuss in, in terms of how we would take care of that. Um, the initial conversations that we had when we first reached out to the railroad, I actually did get a chance to talk to somebody on a phone miraculously uh, about 18 months ago when we were first looking at this, is that they did not have an issue in getting rid of it just because obviously it was abandoned. Um, but we still have yet to see the paperwork to get that actually completed. And then this was also one of the um, sites that I had recommended to be looked at for future police and fire. So that we take that off the table. Um, not necessarily, um, depending on uh, the timing and then how they would reconfigure the, the driveways, um, could still allow room <coughs> for other pieces of the property uh, to be configured into uh, allowing for that police and fire center. No inquiries to date to the point? Um, when we first purchased it, there was one person who wanted to look at potentially um, <coughs> You know, maybe some type of bar again okay. there. Um, you know, with that, the, the building itself is in really rough shape, and so a lot of money would need to be put into rehab. I mean, right down to just, I mean, Ken's probably the expert on the building, but I mean, it, it, I mean, it needs guts replaced too. I mean, the HVAC and electrical and water and all that, I mean, it needs to be gutted. Um, you know, with that also, just given the, the site constraints for parking and other things, it just hasn't been. Right. Uh, a viable option. Kevin, my memory serves me that there's a large underground sewer line in that vicinity. I don't know if it's on those parcels or if it's the old right of way just to the east. And whether that would affect, you know, their plans or not, but I would I would just ask that we take that into consideration. Sure. If, if in fact my memory serves me correctly. Their plans, as we've discussed, don't involve any structures, so I don't think that would play a role, but probably we need to check with our right away specialist to make sure there's nothing that would have been there. And even if the railroad doesn't deed the property to you, just pay one more for use until they, if they need it sometime, then it's theirs, you're not putting any structures on it. Correct. I'll defer to our attorney on that strategy. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's what they do. We have the ultimate Well, it, it won't be the city strategy. Transit. Any further discussion? Well, I want to get one quick question. What's Transit's uh, backup plan if they don't get this property? Um, I've got, I guess there's some strategies to be discussed. Um, I'm not really sure. I guess in terms of negotiating oh. sale, purchase other properties that they want to discuss those okay. in open session right now. Sure. I think we do have closed session language on here. If you'd like to no. kind of discuss some options, um, there are other alternatives. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the same owners of that parcel on the one to the left? No. No? Uh, I'm sorry. So we uh, own just we the own, corner piece. Correct. And then the TJT Associates owns the next two parcels, the, next the parking lot and structure. And then a third entity, Trio Entertainment Group, owns the old shelter. I don't know what you don't call that bar. It's that one. The, um, as well as well the parking lot to the east. So there's three property owners, us and two private entities, that own the parcels in this area. 
Okay, as for Mercy, then the sale of the site to the uh, Gravy Metro for $125,000. Plus the cost, plus of, the cost of, of, plus the cost of uh, raising the existing building yeah, on the site. Just a, a quick question on that additional on the teardown funds. Are those coming into the enhancement funds or are they going back to the general fund? Well, they, we have you'd, use, you'd use enhancement to, dem to demolish it. So oh, okay. Right well, back into the enhancement. Did right. a motion to? No, no, that wasn't a motion. <laughs> oh, <Al. laughs> <laughs> You're looking for a motion. I'm looking for a motion. Uh, motion to approve. I'm just curious about Joe, though, over there. I mean, are you on board with this or because of your future plans there, Joe? Joe? I don't know what the... Uh, <clears throat> look, I mean, that's that's where I vote. It's where our neighborhood association meetings are over at Transit. And it is a, you know, parking and entrances right next to Station 2. I mean, it's a real hassle. And I'd like to see something happen with that corner. But it, it just seems like such a high-profile corner kind of your gateway to the downtown, you know, to put a parking lot in. I, I guess it's nice, you know, if transit's got it, and you know, there's some kind of future access we can get to, but what are we going to buy it back for if we ever want to do something there? So, I don't know. So don't know <coughs> I'm, I'm not on board with it on board right now, but I'll probably ask some more questions and yeah. figure it out. But would, you, would you consider adding the right of first, first refusal on it? I think that would help. Or, or what, time what, what are we giving? We're taking the right of first refusal, or you're giving them the right of first refusal? For us to have a right of first refusal, if they ever. The right of first refusal, what are we doing? At the same time, what are we doing? At the same they've got those we're, same we're cover relations. It, we're dealing with two of them. There's not a competing, competing bid for it, so what are we, what does our right give us? So if they ever want to sell it, you guys would have to first Oh, right okay. To if in the future they wanted to, mm -hmm. Transit wanted to sell it. Okay, sure. Yeah, absolutely. Right. They don't have those same regulations as far as selling property as they do as far as buying one and tearing something down? I would I don't know. It just seems like it's yeah. just puffy it, language to make us feel good. Well, <laughs> but, but it may, you know, yeah. 30 years from now, it maybe yeah. it comes into play. Yeah. I and mean, it doesn't hurt to insert the language. Mm -hmm. Well, and, and I guess in terms of, I think, you know, uh, talking with director, Hewitt's over at Transit. I mean, this is a timely issue, but if you wanted to hold it for till the next meeting, um, and, and maybe she would want to talk a little bit more about her plans. Um, uh, anyway, that well, made you get more comfortable with problem that. Uh, it, uh, yeah, I would like to hold it. Yeah. Um, First time we talked about it. So at least, yeah, we could ask some more questions. Sure. Do, do we have a, a, a type of an overlay plan for that corner? I mean, I know we did Webster, the Webster corridor, but did we have any sort of Quincy here coming into it? As he mentioned, it's, a ga it's going to be or tends to be a gateway. Correct. Not not specifically. I mean, our our strategy was to Acquire. again look at this this corner as a higher density mixed use. Um, I, I think one of the things that we found in, in terms of one just the the cost of assemblage there um, was higher than we needed it to be. The, the site itself um, was still a little bit constrained. I think that railroad right away kind of made some private entities a little bit nervous versus you know a public entity taking over. And three, uh, just based on our market, there were other sites that were more lucrative at that time versus this one. Well, so is this property in the floodplain too? Yes, as well. It That's is, probably okay. for it. Not I a wonder, year, but yeah. It looks like the railroad is, is already under contract. Correct. Yeah. yeah, and that's what I say in terms of like using that that the use, parcel. I mean, but you said the assemblage cost. We're not. Uh, you think it'd be quite expensive to acquire those properties to the north? Mm -hmm. uh, in terms of the the cost needed, yes, to acquire them, for then also taking them down. It it was more in terms of the. It's tough to make the numbers work for the cost needed to start from the ground up versus maybe some other properties. Could I ask if um, if we refer if we were to refer this back, <coughs> is prepping the site and leasing the site an op and an option that we might have, or we could still have control of that site for some future development uh, by working out a lease agreement, maybe having some sort of an annual income coming in on a lease. So you're saying just kind of I mean, uh, if we're going to hold this over for a month, I think it's worth a discussion. Clean up the building to be able to lease it out. What about leasing to the oh, I mean, to if the we transit? Have transit? Right, lease it back. That's what I mean, is lease it back to transit. Tear it down, prep the site, and, if, if and then lease it back to transit as parking or their entrances or whatever it is they need. 
Sure. And yeah, it saves transit one hundred twenty-five thousand dollars in, in mm -hmm. upfront cost plus teardown, and we can start to accrue something to come back for the cost of the teardown and the site prep, and at least you know start to offset that cost. Mm -hmm. So about a, a long-term lease and then, instead of... Right, and then just making sure that we have an out written into a lease if a development project does come percent. along that we have an opportunity to, you know, we're not hamstrung on this. Okay. Um, I, I would make that motion that we refer this back to staff um, and maybe invite transit to our next RDA meeting to discuss sure. their plans, but okay. then also to look into the possibility of a lease right. agreement. Okay. okay, we have a motion by Joe, second by Gary, then to refer the... The issue on the sale of the property to Metro for $125,000 referred to staff to come back with some additional thoughts at the next meeting. Okay. Those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. Uh, let's see. Um, consideration of possible action to purchase real estate at 545, 531, 613 South Broadway. Tax parcels 276, 277, 2109 for $145,000 using neighborhood management funds. All right, so these are the three parcels that we discussed at our meeting last time. Uh, these are all along South Broadway. Uh, Is that near the bridge? Correct, so yeah. just north of Mason Street. Basically, right. as you come down Clinton Street, these are the properties that you see. We talked uh, about the last meeting. Yep, and so right to the right of it is where uh, 100 West Mason is, where we talked about, again, future uh, shipyard development site. Um, part of the discussion was, you know, I think prompted by, you know, moving forward with the shipyard and, and, and looking at these three parcels as, as acquiring them um, to be able to incorporate them into that site. I think a conversation uh, led to, again, regardless of shipyard or some other project moving forward, it's in the redevelopment authority's best interest to have control over all of those properties because these three really control the sight lines and some of the access, um, you know, in terms of visibility to that property. Uh, so with that, uh, in terms of being able to purchase these, um, we have an agreed upon price of $145,000. Um, just provided some details in terms of the <coughs> acreage and the uh, assessed value of those three properties there. Um, and so with that, uh, again, uh, we recommend neighbor enhancement funds. Uh, the state of the memo that the shipyard project move forward, uh, we would use project costs from that uh, project to uh, reimburse the neighborhood enhancement as these would be tied into it, uh, most likely for, for parking to, to serve that. Um, if that does not move forward, then I think uh, I mentioned in here that this come back to the RDA to discuss future alternatives, whether to keep the structures in place, try and lease them out, uh, or, or see what other alternatives we may have for uh, best using those properties. Now, those buildings are all vacant now? Correct, they are yeah. not. What's the spur, the railroad spur, is that active at all still? That railroad spur it goes yeah. out to Bay Valley Foods. Um, so it, it does get used. Yeah. It, it's not a very active one, um, but, but it does get used. Uh, just one other caveat I guess I did not mention in here. We have also, um, through our Brownfields <coughs> grant, uh, we did perform some uh, environmental testing uh, on those buildings because it was a service station at one time. Um, you know, just some minor things, but no significant cleanup. Check sure, uh, Yes, yep, went through, and then actually one of the levels came back high, so we went back and did some extra testing and, and found out everything was, was normal. So, um, yeah, we, we've done the phase one and phase two uh, for these properties as well. 2.107 is just a billboard, right? Correct, not owned no. by this. Not either forever. Yeah. More questions? More questions? <laughs> Uh, we, yeah. no, I'm, I'm we feel good about the dollar amount. And yeah, I mean we're 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 assessed. Um, you know, all three of these at one seventy five uh, okay. for this land. I also feel in terms of um, you know our, our option is, is coming due sure. and based on you know potential development there. I don't know if, if we let this go and came back in a few months we get it at this price. Mm -hmm. One in the hand. Make a motion to approve the purchase. Second. Motion by uh, Joe, second by uh, Jim. Those in favor say aye. Aye. Those in favor. Number seven, consideration of possible action and purchase 871 West Mason Street using the award enhancement funds. All right. That uh, me again. All right. Um, all right. So the RDA purchased this property back in September um, using CDBG funding um, and with the intent of converting a two-family home back into a single-family home and selling it to an income-qualified uh, homeowner. Uh, 
we started putting some numbers together and then we also did the environmental study on it and um, after reporting that to our HUD director or our HUD advisor um, they had recommended to use our federal funding um, on other projects and not focus on this project um, so in order for us to hopefully keep this property on the tax roll not you know tear it down um, we're open to purchase it with the neighborhood enhancement funds um, and then put it out for an RFP um, so we can kind of mix our funding with other mm -hmm. uh, private funding um, to get this back on this tax roll so Kevin um, is the house in fairly good shape it looks kind of good from here yeah, but it <laughs> yeah um, fairly good shape there are some you know issues with the um, like around the box sill there's some rot that would need to be fixed um, just I guess it was a little bit more extensive than we thought originally looking at it, but not anything, I guess, too crazy. Um, but really the main, um, I guess what the main issue is the noise. <coughs> the use of so block grant funds will have to do some major exterior renovations for some buffer, um, to provide a sound buffer okay. according to the HUD rules. Um, so I think it's just a better fit to do it. Let's do it with enhancement funds on market. Um, Insulate it well. <laughs> Right. So, and you know, the, one of the other original main goals here was we own the two parcels right <coughs> behind it, and we wanted to connect those to this one um, to make those actually marketable. And we've done that. It's all one parcel now. So, you can dispose of all three then. Yeah. I make a motion to approve the purchase of eight seventy one West Mason Street for fifty one thousand eight seventy. Plus 50, yes, the neighborhood enhancement Second. We have a motion by Gary, second by... I second that. Sure. Second by Joe, those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, right. carried. Number eight, bills. Also action on the financial report and the check register as provided. I got a problem with this. You got a problem? First, my name's not on it, they don't. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's the uh, correct spelling on Jack Bonsky. What is, what is the price spell? B-O-M. Oh, Ponsky. Oh, Ponsky. Okay. Well, you do it. It's fine. Move motion to approve. Second. We have a motion and a second by Matt. Uh, oh, approve the financial report. Those are three say. Aye. Those are carried. And uh, finally, um, <coughs> Kevin, you want to uh, comment on your uh, information? Sure. That's uh, number nine. It's actually Ken's list. Right. I have the RBA property list. All right. Um, let me pass these off here. This, this is basically, this is all the property that the RDA owns. Um, so this would be you know, any, anything from you know, parking lots or anything that like leases on the uh, AI convention center. Do you need a listing agent? Um, I got procuring cause on these. On yeah, <laughs> just because you got them first, right? <laughs> so I think just a, a bigger picture, one of the things that we've talked both here and with the Economic Development Authority <coughs> is getting a handle on all the property that we, either RDA or city, own. And, it, and it's starting to go through and figure out, all right, what are we doing with it? What's happening? And if we're not using it for anything, do we start looking to dispose of some of it? I think, you know, Ken's first task was to focus on the RDA ones because I think those are a little, a little simpler. Um, There's less of them, that's for sure. Correct. Yeah. <laughs> um, and, but part of it also, you know, in, in the due diligence also involves how do we acquire these? Because if we acquire them with block grant funds, there may be some strings attached and how we dispose of them. Correct. So I don't know if you want to talk through the list a little bit more and just some of the things that you found or any yeah. surprises. I guess one of the other things I went through here, I... I looked at if any of these were adjacent to any other city parcels or any other RDA parcels and put some maps together to just kind of show where those mm -hmm. came together, if that was something that just to kind of bring some of these numbers down, you could join those parcels together sure. if, you know, if we wanted to, um, just so that this overall number of actual parcels was a little less, you know, you know brought that number down. So. Um, mm -hmm. So, do we know specifically which ones the RDA has control over? 
I mean, you do. I'm sure you do. Uh, is there something on here that tells me that? These are all ours. Yeah. All, all yeah. yeah. This is just like RDA. There's, there's another list of about <laughs> 400 <laughs> that are just. This is your real estate so. portfolio, Gary. <laughs> <laughs> Kevin, do you th have a thought as to, of these properties, how much would could be marketable and, and sold? I do. Um, I have another list that's actually on our website. Um, that is one that they are actively trying to dispose of. Yeah, soliciting RFPs for? Yeah, the RFPs, or just some of them are listed just as you know fair market value, just to see if we can get some interest, on, interest on them. So all of these right now are off the tax rolls, right? That's correct. Okay. Plus the 400 city owned ones. Right. The 400 city owned ones. So, so our, uh, no, our goal is to change that. Right. Okay. Some of them. <laughs> so well, like, for example, one. community policing yeah. centers are as on land yeah. that we already ate. So yeah. that's, that's I think we want to keep a couple of those. Right. 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 What is music? What is MKE? That's that other development company that shall be shown over. The Milwaukee? Milwaukee. Do we, do we, through this process, have an estimate of what kind of tax income that is not on the tax roll today, but is sitting on this list? I did I did not put that together, no. And because here is... Well, there's not a value on them any longer. Right. try to Google them, you have to... You look at the, the neighborhood and the, the land assessments and, and, right. and you just get rough ideas per huh. acre per lot. Because there is the whole idea there would be, hey, let's suppose there's, I don't know, you know, right, a million dollars of tax value sitting here on this list. And you yeah. said, hey, should we be getting a resource mm -hmm. to help us market these properties and return to the tax roll and spend mm -hmm. $100,000 a year to bring in a million? That well, would seem like a pretty good it's idea. It's a good ratio. I like it. <laughs> I just think, okay. Wow. Oh, well, well, interesting. Good. Great job. We've got some homework. Yeah. yeah. Well, I think it's it's part of sending this list out, um, you know, circulating with the different departments and, and seeing, again, what they're used for, um, how they're being used, are there other options in terms of, look, just, you know, those entities acquiring them, um, and just, yeah, how best we want to do some of these things. And, you know, to Member Schuler's point, I mean, yeah, if there's some words, it's time to spin off. Um, making sure that we do that, you know, I think marketing them, but also, you know, just kind of a, a blitz to focus mm -hmm. on. Again, and you know, we take maybe particular neighborhoods and like, look, this month or, or now we're really focusing on, you know, getting these to market and, um, you know, just making sure, yeah, if, if there's not a strategic interest for us holding on to them, then... Get rid of them. Yep. Or sale. Yep. What was the property, the partial count? Okay. Well, that's one. Oh, come on. So it was like 140. Can you get that? <laughs> I got that. I should have put a count on that. <laughs> well, thanks, Kevin. I, I, can, I can email it to you, too, yeah. if you want. Yeah. He can count on himself. <laughs> no, no. I mean, he's got a spreadsheet, so he can just count the spread. Whatever. Bottom line, you got to start with inventory. And you've done that. Mm -hmm. That's great. Mm -hmm. Restart it. Put 144. Joe says 144. <laughs> Joe said 144. I'll wait till you. <laughs> we'll get your email and then we'll compare them. Yeah. Well, thanks, Kevin. We appreciate it. Can, can I just can. ask a couple of questions? Yeah. It, it Both might, guys. It might be helpful if you could sort this either by current use or future plan. So we're not oh, sure. two lines yeah. going down. You know, and maybe do it both ways, to be quite honest, so we could focus yep. on categories that mm -hmm. we would have future discussion on the yeah, the, the plan, yeah. Residential I can do that. Yeah. 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 Kevin, you got a report for us? I hope. Yeah, I just wanted to provide an update. Um, I emailed out just the project list. Uh, basically, that's something that we discussed at, at Finance Committee and, and with the RDA, just to give an update on where some of our projects are at. Um, you know, with that being also able to confidentially to share some information uh, with RDA members and council members. Uh, this is the first take at it. If there's additional projects that you would like to see on there, uh, please let me know or if there, there's further details that you'd like to discuss on there. Um, I, I think this was a way just to, again, based on Finance Committee's comments, um, just provide some uh, additional communication between uh, our staff and, and
and elected officials and, and in terms of where things are tracking and especially projects that we've you know maybe voted on a term sheet just kind of when we maybe anticipated things coming mm -hmm. back in mm -hmm. terms of a development agreement uh, or following up on, on some of those um, with that uh, I think you know we've got a lot of stuff in, in um, yeah. We still have a busy spring and, and a busy summer, um, you know, not including this whole list of, you know, a lot of smaller projects. Um, and, and with that, I just wanted to say one other update. Um, we did bring on a new staff member. Matt Buchanan uh, is here. Yeah. So he's going to be a development Welcome. specialist in our uh, economic opportunity team. Aaron's here. Too. And Aaron is here as well. All right. And uh, Aaron Rosnick uh, is our design specialist, and, and she's going to be uh, I was in the planning team, um, but she was brought on board also to help with economic development and then working on you know, some of our larger sites, uh, work with you know, design concepts and ideas, um, you know, doing some GIS work, um, and again, helping us with uh, marketing and, and moving some of these properties forward. A quick question for Ken. Uh, a couple of us took a tour of the Maple Street uh, property. Any more thoughts? Or I've been, yeah, I've had a few meetings. Um, I'll have a Further breakdown the report for you as an upcoming <laughs> argument. So um, I don't know what did we was there another one scheduled coming up here, Kevin? Or otherwise it'll be at the just the following. Correct. Um, one of the things we may look at just in terms of, of meeting schedule because we do have a lot in the queue is potentially uh, meeting in two weeks um, on April 25th. Um, so I may have Lisa send out um, just a, a quick poll for maybe meeting that week. Um, just to kind of spread out so we don't have uh, to get through things, um, some monster meetings. Um, one of the things that I also uh, talked about at, at City Council, and I guess we talked a little bit about here um, with, with Hotel Parkland, um, we do have uh, a replacement senior lender in place. Um, part of that will involve some modification of, of documents in terms of our development agreement or the creditor agreement. Um, those changes will have to be approved by all the junior lenders, but RDA and City included. Um, so we just wanted to get a, a meeting scheduled if those needed to come through. Um, also some other projects just that we had ample time to, to mark those and, and get those in the process. Kevin, do they have a target as to when they want to get everybody signed on that so they can... Their target is to close um, May 1st. May 1st? Yep, and then they would get back to work right away. Good. Very good. Now they are still working now? Some Minimally. Yeah, right. Very, I understand yeah, that. I mean, they're, they're bare bones just to keep yeah. things, um, you know, safe and, and secure there. I mean, the good news is before things did slow down, I mean, the building is secure and fully enclosed. So in terms of being exposed to yeah. elements, that, that's not an issue. What would be the target completion date if they get to May 1st? Uh, if they're able to get back up running May 1st, then be open in September. In September. Mm -hmm. Good. Yeah. Right. Anything else? We're adjourned. We're adjourned. Good work, guys. Mm -hmm. Over in yeah. 15. Yeah. 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 Yeah.